Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, journalists, welcome to an episode of Tommy Talk of Minus One. This is much reporter Anthony. This is a judo podcast for judo players by two judo players. So, Anthony, how you doing? Uh, I, I'm really uh, a little hungover, actually. <laughs> hungover? Yeah, yesterday. Oh, how's, the, how's the comedy show? Yeah. Yeah, we went to see one of our students um, compete, compete, <laughs> compete in compete. a comedy show. <laughs> it it kind of is a comp- competition. You compete no, against a crowd. Perform. Uh, he was performing <laughs> a comedy show. And I haven't been to a comedy show in over 10 years or 15 years, I think. Um, last time I went, I was like a teenager and my, sis- my sister dragged me to watch Whose Line Is It Anyway live. I don't know. Uh, so it's an improv comedy, which yeah, is kind of different from stand-up comedy. Um, so I'm, I was watching um, Peter, This um, our student, was like, Peter, it's Instagram, and he was saying, hey, I'm going to be at the comedy store. Not the comedy store. Um, belly Room. The Belly Room at, is it bel- at the comedy store? Or, yeah, it's at the Calvin yeah. Comedy Store. Yeah, so he was like, I'm going to be performing there. And... Um, so I was like, well, I always thought about going and usually he performs on a Friday night and then I'm like training Friday night. So this time it's on a Saturday night. So I left, I skipped Rondori and then uh, went home, took a shower, uh, did some dojo paperwork because we had a lot of people sign up and the, uh, the topic of probably, I don't know what we're going to talk about today, but we, I was redoing the website. So there's a lot of stuff on the website that I had to sort out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... We got changed and drove to West Hollywood and went to the comedy store. Um, yeah, it was more fun than I expected. Like, uh, I was I kind of only went because my wife wanted to go, but mm-hmm. uh, I, I had a lot of fun. Uh, the the only thing that pissed me off was okay. What made you mad? The tickets at first. Oh, I was like, oh, oh, man, oh, oh the tricky. tickets. Yeah, the <laughs> tickets were twenty dollars. I was like, oh yeah, that's that's pretty cheap. And then. Mm check out it was like seventeen dollars in fees almost as much as the ticket seventeen dollars would you get a yeah. ticket master or something what was this no you buy it through their their app little, right their, yeah it's not it's i forgot what the app uh the site is called uh-huh. but yeah it was seventeen dollars tickets uh seventeen dollars in fees and then um then I thought about it. I'm like, well, you know what? We'll we'll just go to say we've we've done it right so mm-hmm. I told Peter I was gonna go already so I bought the tickets and then once we got there there was no parking yeah i was gonna ask you that next so <laughs> I, I know how you are you're, you're a little bit like me when it comes to parking and stuff living in la you become this way you know <laughs> so the tickets are already 20 dollars. you got 17 dollars in fees yep. you're gonna spend at least 20 dollars on parking i'm thinking if you if you're lucky no, you no. find street parking or you're willing to walk no there's no street parking right no there's no no street parking because it's what? all uh no parking between 7 and p.m and 7 a.m so no overnight parking oh, basically okay yeah so you'd have to park pretty far and walk pretty far which is what peter did apparently <laughs> yeah um <laughs> to that's what he did but then mm-hmm. i didn't want to do that i don't I, well i didn't know how far i'd have to go because <laughs> i th- does that make sense like yeah, he yeah. knew the area so he yeah, was like oh you I can just park here and I'll walk like 10 minutes or something. Mm-hmm. So I pull, I was ready to pay for a parking garage next door. Or there's two parking spots next door. Pulled in, all the lots were full. <laughs> so luckily, um, for those who don't know, we bought a new car. So we had an electric charger and there was a, some EV parking only spots. So we were able to charge our EV while... Um, paying for the parking and the parking ended mm-hmm. up being eight dollars oh so it's eight dollars for parking yeah. and then we got our own spot luckily because we had a new car that was an ev so we were able to park mm-hmm. in the ev only parking spot and it was right next to the comedy store and then there's a two drinks minimum per person <laughs> at the comedy store each oh, drink. So, uh, so the two so you had to buy tickets <laughs> get fees yeah. pay for parking and a two drink minimum yep per person and it was 17 dollars a drink Seventeen dollars a drink. Good <laughs> lord! Holy. Yeah, I think some of the beers were like fourteen or fifteen. Uh, the cocktails <laughs> were seventeen. I got a cocktail, and obviously it was all ice. Did I, did I, <laughs> can I like? Can I get a soda? Please? Can I get a water? Can I get two water? You can please? get you can get water too, which is one some people did. Two waters um, and a lemon. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was interesting, and um, I mean, I'm 
personal because I grew up abroad, like the humor, I'm not that in tune with American humor, especially stand up humor. Like some of the stand up comics were making sports jokes, and I, I don't really watch sport team, like team sports. Mm-hmm. So I didn't get some of the jokes, but I really appreciate the, the artistry of it, if that makes sense. I don't want to like go too deep into it, but how they are able to perform in front of the crowd and you can kind of see that there's some sort of improv going on. Like they have like a guideline for their joke kind of, but they, mm-hmm. the way that they word it and the flow is like, um, and how they read the room is I, I really appreciate that. So it was really interesting, uh, watching it. Um, kind of like how I used to go to Chinese opera with my, my grandfather. Like I, I don't like it, but I really could appreciate the the cultural aspect of it. Um, yeah. And then there were, there were, um, some porn stars on the first row and they were like making jokes with the, the porn stars. You're like, the first row. <laughs> you're like, honey, I have no idea who these women are. Who are they? No, so, so, so the fun- hey, Anthony. Uh, I mean, I don't know. No, the, the funny thing is the, the whole first row, they're friends. They know each other. Mm. And when I stepped in, I couldn't stop looking at this guy. This oh, one yeah, guy. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Let, let me finish the story. I cannot stop looking at the guy. I'm like, where have I seen them before? And then he just looks like, man, <laughs> I feel like I've seen him somewhere before. And oh, yeah, you've seen him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, no. So um, he's not from a porn. He's not from porn. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. Whatever you um, say, Anthony. <laughs> but uh, afterwards they they talk to the porn star and then they're like oh are you guys porn stars too and then they're like actually yeah like the people right next to them were actual porn stars mm-hmm. and they're like oh what's your only fan's name and then she said she said the name and i'm like oh that's the uh, the twitch streamer cuz i i used to watch a lot of twitch right You're digging a hole for yourself <laughs> yeah. I, I, I used to watch a lot of twitch streamers but i didn't know she like transitioned to porn so i looked it up mm-hmm. last night oh yeah she like start that's a common thing now like a lot of twitch streamers transition to porn so um there's that and then i was like oh wait a minute if they're with them like the people next to the twitch streamer they don't do porn but i recognize them from i was like oh that's the twitch streamer that i know that there's a whole drop a slew of drama that happened where she was like her wife was cheating on him or something and they divorced or something but I thought they were divorced, but they're sitting next to each other. So the whole thing was really, really just interesting. Um, mm-hmm. Having that uh, whole experience and not to mention some people were really wasted mm-hmm. <laughs> at oh, the yeah. place. So people watching was the, the fun part, but uh, yeah, really got to appreciate the, the artistry of it, but that's, mm-hmm. that's how I'm doing this. That was <laughs> what I did well, last night. How was, how was Peter's comedy? Was there any judo comedy in there? No. You know so he's he, trying to throw a guy and he's trying to fight you a lot. He actually ha- told us next time we go, he's going to do some like fighting. He didn't say judo. He said fighting because he, he does uh, Muay Thai and stuff like that too. Mm-hmm. So he's going to do some of that kind of stuff. But um, I think he was just trying out something different. And uh, yeah, there, there was a lot of dark jokes that, that, that day. <laughs> just put it that way. Yeah. Not uh, from him, not from him. Um, from the other people. Um, okay. Yeah, there's a lot, of, lot of dark trends. I'm not going to repeat it here. <laughs> so, right. yeah, people have to be thick skinned. Um, Peter made a joke that I knew definitely didn't sit well with some people because I looked around the room and I'm just like, mm, <laughs> Michael, okay. fight way out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that that's what I enjoyed most was when they make made some jokes. I want to mm-hmm. look around and see if it offended certain people. And yeah, yeah. So Peter's like, yeah, when I perform with a minority uh, audience that's full of minorities, they think that joke's hilarious, but in a room in West Hollywood full of white people, you know, like <laughs> it didn't hit right. <laughs> Boo. <No. laughs> that's funny. That's, that's cool. I, I should go sometime to go support yeah. them. Well, but... just get ready to pay. Like I, I ordered. <laughs> so it was two drinks per person plus uh, a pretzel and a plus tip. It came out to like almost a hundred bucks. So, yeah. Yeah. See, well, I'm a big cheap Metskin, so I would one see how much it would cost to Uber there. That would have to pay for parking. But Uber might be expensive. So I'd probably drive there, mm-hmm. park really far away, and walk my butt over there or yeah. something. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny. I've had some friends perform there and they always invite me. Like I, they've done like some afternoon shows. I'm like, mm-hmm. I could probably make it their afternoon, but it's just my skill just never works out for me. My friend, um, 
Miss Buffy May, she's the one, I think she performed there a couple of times and she's always like, come watch me. It's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to. And then I never do. And I feel bad because it's like, I totally wanted to, but I can't make it. But yeah, yeah it happens. That's life. So that sounds like a fun night for you, you know, comedy, driving, fighting. Yeah, I, I don't think LA I would have enjoyed, enjoyed as much if I didn't get a little tipsy. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, if I went, I might heckle him just for fun to see what he would do. <laughs> That's not that's not nice. Yeah, it is totally nice. I want him to nice. pick on me. Try. Yeah. <laughs> Give me your worst. <laughs> I'm thick skin. Oh, that hurt. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, in some let's move on now. So let's go to some local judo news. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's no, nothing that big really happened this in uh, the world of international judo, but let's talk about a little bit of some American judo news. So um very really cool thing happened here for our local Don Shikai. So our local John Chikai has the Naka Spring Tournament and Naka Fall Tournament. Mm-hmm. And I guess this year was a $500, a $500, a $500, $500. cap to get in. Yeah. A 500 person, 500 person cap. Well, I last checked, I last checked, they're still accepting registrations, I think, because after they hit the mm-hmm. 500 cap, it, the registration is like 560 something people. Re- registration, 560 registrants. And then because they count like if you if i sign up for two brackets mm-hmm. like um seniors mm-hmm. and veterans it would mm-hmm. um count as two registrants yeah. um so i was going to check whether that's the case um because i, I told you before like mm-hmm. i was checking how many of those registrants were adults and yeah like we'll just let's just say it's it like wasn't less, a lot not a lot of adults <laughs> yeah um but I just so, want to but, say, but they closed off yeah. this is what they should do after all the, all right, everyone's right. registered they need to make it private like people need to start doing that because you shouldn't people are going to start looking at their brackets and not showing up or like mm-hmm. you, you know what i mean like oh i'm fighting that guy again I'm, and then they don't show up so mm. um, or the only one person in my bracket or yeah so i couldn't oh God, check 16 oh no <laughs> yeah after they capped off i couldn't i couldn't check uh whether there were duplicates or not anymore mm-hmm. but i just want to say congratulations naka for the having the naka spring tournament i mean naka fall tournament yeah. right now uh next week they're having it so the day after this turn after our episode comes out so they capped it at 500 at least that's what they told us and they kept sending us emails the entire week as instructors like hey let your students know we're running out of spaces space Space is going fast and then when they reach 500 they get an email out to us like hey we reached 500 that's our max we're done with registration which i want to say congratulations for getting 500 people out there growing judo getting people to go compete i think is an amazing thing but you saying that this is going to be this one just going to pro wrestling again this really sounds like the thing right now that's happening. You don't know this, but mm-hmm. there's this thing in pro wrestling where what was the true biggest uh, gate for wrestling? Because one federation, AEW, just had a show in England that had 81,000 some odd people. And the big thing was that WrestleMania 3 had more than that, had like 90 or something thousand people that were trying to break that gate. But it was that argument of, is that the real number? Is that the turnstile number? Is that the tickets bought? Is that everyone inside the other venue? So it's funny to me that you bring that up, but that's just a little nerdy thing for me out there. And anyone that's into pro wrestling, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But congratulations for getting 500 judo players inside that tiny ass high school with one bathroom. Yeah. Have fun that day. Anthony, uh, is it in going. Westminster High School? Yes. In Westminster High School. Oh, man. Okay. With that one bathroom. I'm going to be there coaching. Um, we have two people competing there. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let, let, let's leave it at that. But um, yeah. I'm glad. I'm, I just want to make a note and say I'm glad that uh, if you guys who have been listening to us since the beginning um, of the podcast, it's become normalized over the last two years to actually close registrations, like no have requiring pre registration. There's no more walk in signups. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I'm glad that has happened, and um, yeah. gotta give credit to um, not us, but um. I think Taborin was a big uh, Taborin Lee um, mm-hmm. had a big. Uh, I, I think he he was kind of like trying to convince everyone to do it and saying it's like stupid that they're yeah not doing uh, pre, they're not um, requiring pre registrations because uh, that's that kind of messes up the the, um, the times like mm-hmm. so I'm glad it's normal now and everyone's doing it and. Nobody is afraid of like, oh, not enough people aren't people are just new, can't do walk up. We're not going to have enough people signing up. Like that's yeah. that's not the case. So yeah, yeah well, but like, that's normalized. 
back in my day, you can go sign the day of. But that was the big thing is like people, you have to mail in your application, mail in your registration form and stuff and hope that they got it because you wouldn't get like an email. Well, sometimes you get email back, but not all the time. So hope they got it. There would be no brackets the day before. And most people would be like, well, let's see if I want to go or not. And I, and I get how are you done? I used to be like, not would be like, oh, we rent out this place. We want to get as many people as possible. So we're going to allow walk-ups, you know, we're going to allow people to just sign up be- to sign up before and just walk up the day up. Cause we want that. We just need people. We want to make people come where doing this now on smooth comp makes it feel a little bit more professional and it makes people feel, I think a little bit more valuable. Cause you no, know, like if I don't sign up by this day, I can't go compete. You know, it makes it gives us some value in my opinion. So that's yep. what I like about it. Um, yep. it's, Go ahead. Do you have something else to say? No, 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 no. Yeah, I was just agreeing, agreeing with you. Yeah. So in some other local American judo news, the USJF, after he put out that one, after he put out the last episode, asked me like, when's registration going to happen? The tournament's a, uh, two month, about two months away. The time is ticking. What's going on? Right after he put out that episode, they put up their registration. Be like, ha ah, we're open for registration. Yeah, I, I, add, I added that um, that segment. The, yeah. I edited it in afterwards uh, for those who listen. But um yeah they, they, they still didn't respond to our messages though like i <laughs> no i had messages. to go check on their facebook page the facebook yeah. page is the only place i think i believe that uh announced it and i don't go on usjs website other than to um renew my membership so let's see if they yeah. announced it on there do 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 yeah they did um but well, they did announce it did on september it on 1st them? yeah yeah wait uh no, they, well, they they did it. They they announced, but they didn't ha- announce the registration was open. Mm. So that's different. But um, yeah. So well, they uploaded finally on the smooth comp. Uh, I know me and some other people are having complications trying to register on there because kept saying our dojo wasn't a registered uh, USGF dojo, which we are. But I know people are complaining. I heard some rumblings online about people trying to register. They couldn't. But now I see people who are registering on there. It is open to do it. So. You want to try try it out yeah i'm not try it out but yeah go compete you know well so far there's 10 registrations with ten. less like a month away um I, i'm just gonna put that out there and also it's like um what I'm, I'm looking it up right now but it's it's overlapping with two judo events that was announced much uh much much much, much earlier, earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to find out which it's the fight fight for the cure, all women's charity judo. Mm-hmm. So that that's literally the day after uh, October 29th. Um, no, the and the clinic's happening the day before that. Yeah, there's a clinic that's happening. Yeah. Uh, October. Yeah. There's a Nevada tournament. Yeah. So it's it's just. Oh, and also City College of San Francisco Invitational. That's like a, the week before that, I think. Mm-hmm. Is it? No. Six days later. No, that's that's happening soon. So it's just really weird. I, I don't know. That that's that date's kind of a weird pick, but oh, that is what it is. Exactly. So I registered for it finally. I'll be out there. Anthony might be out there with me as my coach, my corner man, who they have in my towel, my spit bucket. I'll, I'll the moment you, you bow i'm gonna throw this out <laughs> like, ah, no, ah, no god damn it anthony i'll break your leg when i get out of here <laughs> i'm gonna leave you here in san francisco i'm gonna leave you on Ima- broadway imagine you had like no you, you just had to bow in like so, so and before before they can award you the default win i throw it a towel <laughs> oh, oh sorry your quarter threw it out what <laughs> second place for you here you go <laughs> So that's just some local uh, California, but local U.S. news and stuff. So just let people know how crazy and weird things are in the United States. We're doing great here in Southern California, but one of our major federations is, I don't know what's happened with them with this damn tournament, but it is what it is. So, Anthony, we always talk about on our own at the dojo, oh, that technique's bad for you, like workout stuff right now. Wait, wait, wait. I I was going to talk about pickleball. Oh, yes. Yes. God. <laughs> yeah, Anthony yeah. wanted to compare pickleball conversation. I didn't have want to compare. It was a discussion I just had with my friend uh, right before th- this recording. So mm-hmm. um, I I was wondering why pickleball became so popular. Like I was going through my Instagram story mm-hmm. and 
almost everyone I know started yeah. playing pickleball in the area. Yeah. I um, saw a news article, not, it was not a news article, not article, article but it was a new mm-hmm. segment on like KTL or something like the growing sensation of pickleball in the US. I'm like, why? <laughs> yeah, I, that's exactly what I was thinking. I'm like, why? so at least I talked about in the past, like volleyball and sumo was because of Twitch and um, uh, okay. an anime. And then, uh, is there Prince yeah, of Pickle? Prince of Pickle. <laughs> Prince of Pickleball. <laughs> Prince of Pickleball. So I was wondering why, why, why would you just not play tennis instead? <laughs> like, I was just wondering that. And my friend's like, well, my, my friend at, uh, I was talking with responded, well, pickleball is easy to learn and it's easy to pick up, right? And it's less strenuous. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, okay, but there's a lot of stuff that's easy to learn and easy to pick up. That's mm-hmm. why like, I want to know why pickleball, why did it shot up in popularity so we can maybe copy and recreate it in judo, right? Mm-hmm. Um, not that for, not that that's going to help because we, ha- we already know all these other ways that we can grow judo, but people don't do it. But um, so I was looking it up at the, if, that aside, eventually he was like, well, you know, it's kind of like, like Pickleball and tennis is kind of like judo and BJJ. And then I thought about how I used to run around this park um, in my local neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And they have a tennis court there. They have a bunch of tennis courts up for reservations. And Mm -hmm. I actually have, while I was running around the park in the loop, I've actually seen fights break out before. Not little fights. but like uh, No, people would reserve the tennis court to play pickleball. Oh, okay. And then the tennis players would get... Of, like upset because they're taking up a slot to not play tennis mm. basically oh, no. i had that happen to me one time a yeah. girlfriend of mine wanted we we bought these badminton uh she wanted to play badminton because she yeah. used to be good at it she said in high school i used to play so, it too yeah it's an asian thing <laughs> i just wanted to play so, in hong kong yeah yeah so we got these bad we bought these badminton uh we bought the rackets the the birdies and stuff mm-hmm. we wanted to go play so we saw, well, why don't we just go play at the tennis courts? We tried. Dude, this guy tried to yell at me in Korean. And I was like, I don't know what he's saying to me. I really don't care either. But I can mm-hmm. really tell they're getting really mad that we're here taking up their tennis courts. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. That, that I was wondering, I saw them fighting over it. I was just like, man, it's like just the court. And it's like basically the same thing as what I'm thinking. And then my friend's like, yeah, it's kind of like BJJ and judo. Like, <laughs> I was like, God damn. We're, <laughs> like... He's comparing uh, pickleball to BJJ because pickleball is easy to learn. You don't need to be as athletic. Everything's slower because it uses that wiffle ball thing, like mm. the ball with holes in it. Yeah. Um, the plastic you don't, ball. It's it's more accessible because you don't need as much space. Because for every, I heard for every one tennis court, you can have four um, pickleball courts. Um, because the courts are smaller, which is why it's, it requires less athleticism because you don't have to move and cover as wide of a range. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also cheaper. That's not true for BJJ, but <laughs> <laughs> but if you think about like having more room and stuff like that, that, then that makes sense. But it's cheaper because you don't need a racket that has strings. So the rackets are cheap, uh, smaller and cheaper, and you mm-hmm. don't have to restring them every once mm-hmm. in a while. So you just get a paddle. Um, yeah, and it's easier to learn. So I'm just like... Okay, that I can just kind of see that, <laughs> and how pickleball is getting more popular, just like BJJ is getting more popular. So, um, mm. yeah, just I just thought that was an interesting comparison, but yeah. Well, it's that, funny because you think that a lot of stuff would become more popular if tennis is too hard. Why not go do badminton? If badminton is too hard, I guess you can drop down to pickleball. If pickleball is too hard, you can drop down to I don't know what's actually left after that anymore. <laughs> yeah, so I think what's, what's I that think, South? What's that Southeast Asian game where they where they had the birdie and they kick it back and forth? Oh, shuttlecock. Is that shuttlecock? Yeah. No, I guess you yeah. go to shuttlecock next. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I was like, why, why pickleball? There's so many other things that are cheap and easy to learn, and there's so basically, I, I did some research and one like pickleball has been around for 50 years. Someone, someone in Seattle invented it in their backyard because they were bored and wanted to mm-hmm. play with their kids, something or something that's easier because the kids aren't. Like couldn't make enough or coordinate enough to play tennis, um, but one reason that people said is because COVID um, kind of launched it into popularity because it's hmm. uh, it's kind of like social distancing. You're not right next to so- someone else, and it's outdoors and not like 
a lot of old people play this sport too. So it's accessible because you don't have to run around as much. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, there's still a high skill ceiling, which is also true for PGJ. Um, but the main thing is the social aspect of it. Like it's a mm -hmm. very social sport because you're, because the court is smaller, mm -hmm. you can like talk to each other while you're playing. I was just want to say that. So yeah. you talk like, yeah, yeah, take that. Yeah. You get yeah. this. Yeah. Go get this one now. Yeah. And like, <laughs> how's your kids? When the tennis court, it's like, Hey, <laughs> yelling, hey how's hey. your mama doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, there's the social aspect and then people are posting social media about it. And, mm -hmm. um, I, I'm sure some celebrities or whatever play it and that kind of shot it into popularity. Cause that's what happened to chess. Like a bunch of popular Twitch streamers were streaming with some chess grandmasters. And now, now a bunch of kids are starting to get into chess for that reason. Well, um, it was like, I want to say, God, because I did the episode of Entourage that it made, that I've talked about how popular it was. But there was a point, I want to say like almost 12 years ago, that table tennis was starting to get really popular again. The same thing. Got, like, it's very accessible. These, yeah. yeah. We had these, there supposedly was these table tennis nightclubs in New York. And we did a whole episode of Entourage on it. We did this big rooftop uh, uh, table tennis match. God, who was on the episode that day? I want to say it was who was Uncle? Do you remember? I can't remember the actor's name, but Uncle Jesse from uh, from uh, uh, Full House. Do you remember what the actor? I don't watch was? TV that much. Oh so. come on, Anthony! You help I me know out Full here. House is like an old sitcom, right? <laughs> yes, so. yes. Well, yeah, I remember it was like that. How that came up for a little while, and here in Koreatown, there's like at least three table tennis places I know of out here. So. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, getting, it's getting popular. I mean, you just need a racket. And I mean, in college, everyone played it for, for mm -hmm. me. And then there's always that one one guy, that one uh, international student from Asia <laughs> that had, that's like, oh, I'm not that good. I haven't played in like years. And then <laughs> he pulls out his racket that's from the sli from the case. And you're just like holding the one that, that was shared and the, it's peeling the, the rubber uh. off. <laughs> I'm not that good. And bam, it serves us the ball and you can't even return it. <laughs> it's so curve shot at you. <laughs> <laughs> it's on fire. They're flying at you. <laughs> like, this is not fair. Yeah. So, pick. yeah, I, I mean... That's something judo could learn from the in mm -hmm. regards to the advertising and also just making it more accessible, you know, like, yeah, uh, we we're just talking about how we need like, like to get sanctioned for tournaments and it has to be like a certain size or they won't sanction and referees won't show up. Like, mm -hmm. just make it a casual thing. It doesn't have to always be about tournaments, but uh, it's, uh, the same yeah. with, it's the same thing we talk about advertising all the time. Like, look at yeah. what was it? Last week's UFC fight, there was three oh, judo wins. There were yep. three judo wins. Yet did no you buy? About. Did you buy ads like I told you to? <laughs> I have our normal ads up. I didn't okay. get no special use. The funny thing is, I tried to look for that arm break one to to like pop mm -hmm. Like, hey, what's why you should learn how to fall? Judo, learn how to fall. Blah blah. blah. Yeah. And broke his arm. I couldn't find a good a good take on that pit of uh, that throw. Everything was always after that or right before that. No, I, ha I have it. I thought I sent it to you, didn't I? No, dude, you sent me a little video of it. I'm looking for something on Instagram that I could put on the gram for people to look at. I can make, I can, on Facebook. yeah, I can make something. Uh, yeah. I can edit something up. Yeah. yeah. I'll do it. I'll yeah, send like, look tomorrow. at that. We had yeah. three judo players win this past weekend, uh, half slash Sambo, win this past, win last weekend, and nothing came of it. We did get three new students though this week. That was good for us. Yeah. Uh, we, I, so we, I talked about reworking a website. Since I reworked the website, we got like eight new people. Mm -hmm. So it was. And that would be yeah, next episode. We're talking about some yeah. website yeah. design and advertising stuff that we've been doing and Matt and, <laughs> and yeah. Anthony's headache about it and trying to get people on the mat. So, and my headache of yep. trying to teach other people how to do stuff on there, which is very, it's very easy and simple. I don't know what people are complaining yeah. about. As I like to say, it's so easy a caveman can do it. I, it's also because I saw on Reddit some people are saying, "Hey, our dojo needs a new website," or like, "I just opened a club. Like, this is my website. What do you guys think?" And I'm just like, feel like I'm, we're repeating like the same suggestions. So it's mm -hmm. good to do an episode on on that. Like, what what should be on a website? What you shouldn't put on a website? Which I think is more important for a lot of older judo clubs. I think that is the more important thing is what you shouldn't put on a website, not what you mm -hmm. should put. Is what you shouldn't put. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a what I'm, I don't want to. I'll get to it when we get that episode. But there's a dojo yeah. that I like that I go visit sometimes, and their website. Even they admit, like, oh, you went and saw our Wikipedia, our Wikipedia page, or whatever they call it, because yeah. their website it's all text, and yep. to find anything in there, you have to read everything and figure it out. <laughs> but, yeah, we'll we'll talk about it more. Um, yeah. 
the then. But uh, yeah. So all right, uh, done with what? pickleball. <laughs> Main event. Done with pickleball. I'm done with this. I'm going to. I haven't next. tried it yet, but uh, it looks. So, I'm, I'm sorry. It looks kind of dumb. I honestly, I'll say pickleball <laughs> looks kind of. I rather play tennis. Uh, I used to play handball. Yeah, I know but, you. Uh, was, uh, yeah, Mr. So, Ghetto handball right here in his cholo hand. Is, yeah, that's his, uh, <laughs> handball. Handball is very accessible. All you need is a wall, not even a court. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, so your Cortez I, is on. So it goes back to what I said. Why isn't Peter? Why is it handball? handball? <laughs> why isn't handball or racquetball, which is basically where handball came from? So why isn't that yeah. more popular? So it goes back to that what's, question. But what's yeah. that Spanish game where they have that weird thing on their hand and they throw it across the the like? I have no idea. Tennis court. Oh, watch whatever. I can't remember the name of that thing is, but watch that be the next big fancy thing we we'll get into. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I haven't tried it, but I will try it. Just like the comedy store, I will try it for <laughs> just so I can say I've tried it, and then maybe I'll, I'll enjoy it. Who knows? Mm-hmm. And then you'll throw a guy. Yeah, you beat me, <laughs> <Ipun> Sonagi. <laughs> Go shake his hand, Ashiwaza, right there. <laughs> All right. So All right. what I was going to get to before was talking about like certain. So we're learning more things with through science and technology of what's good for you, what's bad for you while working out. So me and Anthony want to talk about some old school techniques that's not like technique techniques, just the things that people used to do that we know are now bad for you. But even a lot of old school people still do it. So mm-hmm. I'm going to start off with one of my big pet peeves. And I learned this back when I was wrestling because my wrestling coach would say not to do this, even though yeah. other wrestling coaches would say do it all the time. And Anthony's going to bring up some wrestling ones. I'm not going to agree with him. But I, even though I know in my heart, yep. I know they're bad. But because yep. I'm an old school wrestler, people, I don't care. The dogma. The dog, <laughs> the dogma, dogmatic. yes. Yeah. But one of my things is duck walks. Okay? We used to do duck walks when we were a kid when we first started learning how to wrestle. We did duck walks in middle school. And it wasn't until high school. My high school coach went to a clinic talking about like uh, what destroys the knees, how to protect the kids' legs and stuff. And duck walks, one of the main things they said destroys people's legs and knees. Now, yeah, for wrestling, it will develop you, uh, develop your shot and stuff, develop some strong legs. So, would you destroys your knees? Would you include duck walk with uh, bunny hops, or do you think they're separate? I know they're both bad, by the way. (laughs) They are both bad. No, no, they are both bad. But to me, if like when I have people do like uh, double hops or hops together, it's like more the standing hops, not the big like squat down, jump up, squat down, jump up, and stuff. Because I know, I know those are bad for your knees now. Which yep. is funny because you know there's bad for your knees, but that's the same way people also develop um, jumping for basketball when they jump on those. Uh, yeah, there, stuff. there's um, a lot of science behind. Like I, I looked it up because mm-hmm. uh, I I went to, visited a dojo that had us do duck walks, mm-hmm. not not duck walks, sorry, um, bunny hops. Yeah, and my knees hurt like crazy afterwards. Oh, your yeah. knees. This is double. before this is before my knee surgery, by the way. Before I hurt mm-hmm. my knee. And you will hear that snap, crackle, pop as you do it. Yeah. Yeah. So I looked up the research paper and basically there's tons of research saying how it's like really, really bad for your knees. Mm. And um, it also doesn't train your your quad, your, your like whatever muscles, whatever it's, mm. they're supposed to train. It doesn't train them as as well as if you just like did body weight squats. Basically, mm. <laughs> They're like, why are you thing. doing the, doing this? And well, that's another thing that I want that I kind of want to talk about, too, is like so. If duck walks are bad for you, bunny hops are really bad for you. What makes people think? Because I had like some powerlifting friends, and one of mm-hmm. my pops of uh, best friends and stuff was a powerlifter doing these powerlift squats where you're putting your butt to the floor with 500 pounds on your back, butt to the floor, and then I'm gonna squat up all the way from right there. And then you're wondering, why are my knees messed up? Well, why that's not, that's not, now? that's not walking though. But that's still bad for your knees though. They said it's, it's bad not. For your knees. No, not, not, power, not squats. Yeah, no, the ones you go all the way down to your butt. Yeah, where you're acid grass. Yeah, yeah, acid grass. They're actually good. They're actually good for you. Well, from what I've seen in my lifetime, they have not been good for people that I knew that did them. No, it's it's the have... act of is the is the act of moving because you don't have a structure because you're moving. So the jumping mm-hmm. and the the moving, you don't you don't you don't have like a a frame basically a structure holding it. But no, like the acid grass is fine. It's just not the problem. Is everyone's squats squat forms are different. Mm-hmm. So you'll see people say your knees need to be in or this or, or your feet need to be this width. Like everyone's structure is different. So some people say you have to squat ass to grass when they are not meant to, mm-hmm. then that's bad. But if you can do it comfortably, then it's fine. Um, but that that's where I disagree. But um, yeah. so I think ass to grass is fine if you're doing it comfortably, but duck walks and 
uh bunny hops are bad like definitely yeah they story they've been um, super proven that they're not good for your knees they're not good for you especially which, doing which, as as a young kid and then you get older as an older adult they're really no, not good for the, you the funny thing it's so high stress and impact on the joint mm -hmm. and but people do it for warm-ups <laughs> like mm -hmm. um story my i have a friend in australia who was um trying to comp get on the national team for kendo mm -hmm. um to compete on the world and she snapped her acl doing bunny hops for warm-ups mm -hmm. that's a that's a kendo yeah. warm-up right there they do it yeah. all the time in kendo for warm-up yep snapped her acl during warm-ups mm -hmm. um so i mean yeah <laughs> so it's just really really interesting that some of these warm-ups are conditioning like pe people say I, i've gotten heard people say like hey i heard you don't do warm-ups i'm like no i do warm-ups i just don't do conditioning for warm-ups so mm -hmm. there's a difference yeah so i think what's your first one you want to bring up uh, definitely well you already brought it up so the neck bridges in uh yeah. in wrestling how dare yeah. you how do you there's dishonor me like this yeah, any any sort of there's multiple types that you'll see wrestlers do, and almost all of them are uh, not good for your neck. Basically, Juan Juan has a has neck problems. By the way, just so hey, hey, <laughs> hey don't you tell don't you tell my business out there? Don't you tell no one my business? You mother. So yeah, just he saying, has bad knee too. Right? <laughs> yeah, he can't defend. Uh, well, maybe because I I was doing bunny hops and stuff. <laughs> and but, your duck um, walks. <laughs> and my duck walks probably had something to do with it, honestly. But um, not no. I never did duck walks. I always only did bunny hops. Um, so I knew bunny hops was bad, and then I remember I had our kids do uh, duck walks instead, thinking it's better. And then you mm. told me to not to let them do that. So then I yeah. I looked it up afterwards, and I was like, yeah, so Juan was right. Like duck walks are just as bad, just yeah. as bad as uh, bunny I think hops. Worse personally, but yeah, it's also because I hated doing them when I was a kid growing <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> you get that bad memory but yeah, yeah as a wrestler i know that it's one of the things where it's one of the best ways to strengthen your neck and back for bridges to do suplexes mm -hmm. and anthony knows the way i like to do my suplexes is also very i understand it's a very dangerous way of doing it i totally get that i know i'm taking a chance but yes doing traditional neck bridges from wrestling warm-ups are bad for your neck they strengthen it's one of the things where they do strengthen your neck but they compress your spine which then ruins your back later in life yes yep. There's a lot of um, good methods to strengthen your neck safely. Like one is the actually the iron neck thing. Like I know it looks ridiculous and it looks like a scam, but people have, I think it's actually pretty safe and pretty effective to use that iron neck thing. And they're, they're pretty expensive, but you can, uh, I heard you can buy like knockoffs off of Alibaba. Um, <laughs> Alibaba. <laughs> Yeah, I ain't give um, that guy not my money. I'm gonna, I'm a Timu man myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I heard you can get knockoffs. That's pretty good. Uh, ones that I like to do is um hold. So if I if you have a bench, um, mm -hmm. then you put your your neck on the bench and then just static holding it. Um, obviously you can adjust your how far your butt and feet are off the ground and away from the bench just for the intensity. Um, I had I had the my beginners do that one time. Like I had mm -hmm. one person turtle and the other person neck neck. Um, I don't want to call it neck bridge because it's not a bridge. You're just hold. You're basically holding holding it up on your neck, and then you could do a little bit up and down movement uh, with that. Another thing that I used to do with Muay Thai was we tied a towel around a, a weight, mm -hmm. and then we bit on it. But that that messes up your teeth. So <laughs> um, at our dojo, we have like a uh, looks like a torture device thing <laughs> yes, where it's like it straps cool. onto your head and you can tie weight onto it and then you, mm -hmm. you nod up and down. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think neck strengthening is definitely one thing in judo that's definitely uh, under trained and overlooked um, compared to wrestlers. Mm -hmm. um, that's something we should do more of safely, though, like definitely yeah. safely. Uh, the neck bridge thing includes something that people do in judo, which is they bridge their neck out and then they walk around in a circle. Yeah. Like hey, that, no, that, that's a Kung Fu thing. I'm talking about that's your Wing Chun Shaolin Kung Fu right there. All right. I've seen Japanese people do that. <laughs> yeah. No, wrestlers I've do also, that too. I've seen I've wrestlers, seen, BJJ. I've seen everyone do that one. I've Travel. also seen some Japanese schools um, make kids do the flips on their head. Do you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about? So yeah, like yeah, basically yeah. like backflip back bridge yeah. flips and four well, flips you, um, and land on their head you put your head on the mat and you do a tripod with your 
with your hands behind your back. You put your legs yeah. down. So it's your tripod. Yeah. That's a Kung Fu thing out, too. Stretch out, roll your neck and stuff to strengthen it. And you do flips back and forth from that as well. Like you see, I'll do it as a goofy joke for people. Also, yeah. I'll do that flip in class to show people it for fun. But because that's why you my, have messed up neck. <laughs> yeah. But that's why I use the hand version now. Also, you, yeah. I'll do my hands to flip over to show people. But yeah, that's actually all that movement around your neck and stuff. It's going to strengthen the muscles around your neck. Yes, it's going to build a flexibility. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing is that you're compressing your spine, smashing your vertebrae, which is that's when you get that numbness in your hands or yeah. uh, your your arm falls asleep and stuff. And then later in life, you're going to get that stenosis where you can't do stuff and you get bone on bone yeah. grinding. And that's what you hear about um, wrestlers, football players and stuff always having to get neck surgery later to get um, uh, a cage put in there mm -hmm. or just a little thing that the open up your um, vertebrae so you don't get that but then you don't you get the what they call the batman because you ever watch batman part one the mm -hmm. tim burton one yep he couldn't move in that outfit so he yeah. can move his head <laughs> so whenever he had to move he'd move his entire body one way then he hopped the other way they would hop back over here <laughs> he's like what's that ah! <laughs> he couldn't, so that's how you get those guys to get that but that's there are different ways to, str to strengthen your neck and anthony brought up some good ones right there yeah. another one that um i learned later in life was again just laying down and say, just keep your neck straight. Is that mm -hmm. going lightly, lightly going back and forth. And then you yeah, reverse hanging it. off a bench. Yeah. Hanging your head off the bench and going up and down to using gravity. That's another yeah. good one. Yeah. Yeah. But that's thing you had to do that lightly because that goes to my next one, which is I learned again. This, I learned a lot of stuff from wrestling guys. Like mm -hmm. so, oh, before, before we continue. Yeah. 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 I'm going to everything we say in this episode about this, I'm going to try and link studies um, that we we're talking about that, because I don't like making claims like certain other places and channels make claims about sources, but I am preparing from a Japanese trip. So um, <laughs> if I don't put all the sources down, I'm sorry. Uh, if you're I, maybe I'll put it up after like months, a month or two later, if I remember. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it goes with this one as well as about it's about stretching exercises. And you learn this. You learn this pretty young in life. I remember learning, like, I think elementary school, they told us not to do this. And then my wrestling coach told us later, like, don't do this. Even though we're doing neck bridges, but he's like, just don't do this one stretch. So you know how, like, you roll your neck, how you go, like, from ear to ear and stuff, left and right. You're not supposed to roll your neck when you do the whole neck roll. Go 360 and go all the way, your neck yeah. all the way back. That's because, the, again, exactly. that's putting pressure and compressing the your spine so that your disc are being compressed again. So you, you keep smashing those discs over yeah. and over and over again and stuff. So when you warm up your neck, you're supposed to go like, yeah, ear to ear, left and right, like a, like a happy face. You go like yeah. one side happy, the other side happy. You never go half circles. Backwards. We always go yeah. half circles. Yep. Yeah. So, because that puts a lot of pressure on your neck you know, going backwards, which is funny because the wrestling coach telling you not to do that to protect your neck, but then mm -hmm. you do that neck bridge right now. <laughs> you do that bridge. You sit on his stomach while he's in the bridge. All right. <laughs> all right. Everyone's bridging. I'm going to crawl under. If I, if anyone falls, we're starting all over again. So it's like, and again, like a squat. So you right, don't do the squats, <laughs> but you better bridge that neck. I want you to have a beautiful suplex. So it's just one of the things like, I see some people that don't know this or didn't uh, learn this in from other martial arts and stuff. Then I'll see them warm up and they'll be rolling their neck all the way back. And I'll try to sell, I'll tell people like, hey, don't go all the way back, guys. Go half side, only half. Roll it only halfway, halfway. Because personal experience, having neck problems and stuff gets scary sometimes and it hurts and you can't sleep at night and stuff. You don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> so just for, try to protect your neck as much as possible. And that's where I'm very, it's weird things I like to do this crazy stuff i'm very protective of other people and i try to make sure that they do stuff correctly you know so don't roll your neck out all the way back and if you do stretch out your neck like i know there's this thing um in yoga that we do called good mornings i think it is that mm -hmm. i love stretching my back with that with that one or doing a whole thing where i do the bruce lee thing where you you fold all the way down grab your ankles and pull yourself even further so stretch out your neck and back that's a great exercise to do so i think what's your next one you got a stretching uh one? not not a stretch but the kataguruma squats <laughs> i think why? i think they're kind of dangerous honestly why and is uh weight distribution yeah not everyone has strong legs and it's you can't it's not like actual barbell we can adjust the the weight mm -hmm. um i i personally think it's safe if you have to do it it's still i still wouldn't do it but um 
if you have to do it, I, um, what do you call it? Piggyback squats are, mm-hmm. are better. I think it's safer. So you can always bail out by letting go. Right. Mm-hmm. But if I bail out while doing kind of squat, like a top person better know <laughs> how to, to fall, you know, <laughs> yeah, just fall backwards with them. Don't go fall forward. Yeah. Just fall backwards with them. Give them some and drop. Yeah. <laughs> but body weight squats are, are fine, but, um, I'm not a fan of having to do anything in class that you can do at home without mm-hmm. a coach or another person. So, and also things that have another person doing nothing basically. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, Kataguruma squats, I think, uh, that's something, something that I, I think is, again, it's the risk versus reward. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like you're not getting that much of a reward in terms of like the leg strengthening, but the risk is like so high. So mm-hmm. I think the risk for, if you're going to get the same amount of squat, we're using body, someone else's body weight, you might as well just do piggyback squats. Mm-hmm. Given that the, the um, what do you call it? The weight distribution is different, but to me, it's kind of like a high, high bar for those who, who lift. Uh, it's like a high bar squat versus a low, low bar squat. So what he's do you think about that? He's just saying to people, cause I like making people do it in class. That's why <laughs> that's why he's bringing that's it true. up. That's true. That's <laughs> true. No, I get it. I can get a house if some people are not stable enough and, mm-hmm excuse me if you do do if you do do i said do do (laughs) a really deep squat if you can how it can really bad for you i know i can understand that weight distribution is off that's why i kind of tell people like don't squat so deep but get a knee bend but Mm -hmm. some people listen some people don't i could absolutely understand people can get hurt but to me i don't think it's that bad but i get where you're coming from with that one yep Uh, another one for me and this goes back to my taekwondo karate days mostly taekwondo days is that when I can do the splits, okay? I've always been, as long as I can remember doing martial arts, I didn't take me that long to get it. I've always been lucky with my flexibility. And it helps me out with people try to uchimata me, to try to escape, get that, uh, flip them over and stuff, you know? But there's a thing that they do in Taekwondo mostly. I don't, it's not that done that much in karate, but there'll be times where you're doing your butterfly stretch. And some people don't have a good butterfly stretch. Their butterflies are like way up here and stuff. They're yeah. not flattened out there. And you'd get these sometimes young sensei students or your sensei would be like, okay, get a partner. And your partner will sit on you right there. Right? Yeah. So they'll put their legs on your legs or your butterfly. They do, they do it in track too. Like yeah, when, to when put, I did track for a while, they do that. Yeah. To push you down. And I get it. It's adding uh, weight resistance to help you get flexibility. The problem is that when you get someone that's too big for you and forcing you to do that, that's when you get groin tears. Mm-hmm. And groin tears suck because they take forever to heal. Even with me, with my crazy flexibility, I've gotten groin tears before when I haven't been stretched out properly because I always say I have this weird a body uh, muscle memory where my body, I, my body knows I can go here, but I'm sometimes not warmed up to go here. I'm only warmed up to go down here, but my body yeah. still says, oh, Juan, you can go here though. Let's push it. But yeah, that's one way to like just tear, to tear your groin area. And some people can get just really bad tears and they can never do martial arts again because it hurts too much. Another thing that goes the same with that, with the butterfly, is that when people force you to do the splits. So you have your legs out and stuff. We're all doing that leg stretch. And you have a partner behind you. And instead of like gently pushing you and stuff, they'll just put all their wind, just slam you to the mat. Mm-hmm. Again, yep. that's a great way to tear your groin, which again is an old school way that you do it in karate. They do it in taekwondo and stuff to get those legs stretched out. So you can do higher kicks and be more flexible. I get it. But to me, it's one of those things of risk reward, where it's the risk of tearing someone's groin male or female whatever it's going to be so they can do the splits and you get higher kicks and better flexibility to hurt themselves so that's one thing that i know a lot of places don't do it anymore i knew a guy that i trained with in taekwondo he was at this one dojo they did it he tore his groin mm-hmm. and he still complains to it now he stopped doing martial arts after that but yeah just don't in my opinion don't do it because i've seen it happen it's a very easy way to tear it yeah we talked about it briefly and um the older episodes, uh, I think about teaching class and stuff, but mm-hmm. with beginner classes, but we we're talking about static versus dynamic stretching for warmups. Mm-hmm. And that, that study still holds like that. It's basically widely known now that static stretching again, that's something we're going to talk about because you disagree with it. Yeah. <laughs> Stat- static stretching before, before any strenuous activity is actually not good. It actually increases your risk of, uh, injury. Um, so dyna- just think static stretching as in like, uh, 
stretching out and holding that position for a while to stretch it out. Like uh, sitting down, reaching for your toes kind of thing, mm -hmm. like continuous, uh, just trying to reach for your toes, grab it and hold it or uh, pulling your tricep across your arm like that and holding it kind of thing. Those are static stretches. Um, dynamic stretches would be like, um, what do you call it? When you do the side to side thing on your heels. Moving uh, shuffle step. Uh, no, it's like lateral lunges, but side to side, you know, oh, you go okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That or like uh, walking like a zombie and then like kicking your feet up to touch your, your uh, hands. Mm -hmm. Like those are dynamic stretches, but they're not static. So dynamic stretches and stuff that gets your heart rate up is good. But uh, why static stretches are bad, which is kind of tied into what you're saying about overstretching and all doing all that painful stuff is. Let's like go go back to what you said first um stretching should not be painful like a lot of people have this concept that they need to stretch until it hurts until and then they just hold that position until it stops hurting so they're used to it and then it, it kind of elongates the muscle so you get more flexible they've done studies where it actually stretching does elongate your muscle like just normal stretching but stretching to pain does not elongate your muscles all it does is um get your body uh used to the pain um i guess the best example i can think of is like you ever like been in a really hot tub or a hot hot spring at mm -hmm. first it's like ow, ow ow it's hot and then you just like stay in there for a while and get used to it yeah so it's kind of the same you you stretch for so long until it stops hurting then now your body is just used to the pain, but the muscle did not elongate. So the pain was telling you, hey, you're not ready to go this far. Your muscle's not that long. <laughs> and then you're now ignoring it. So now you go train with that range of motion of your body ignoring that pain of that range of motion. And that's how, um, how uh, injuries are more likely to happen. So there's actually really good um, researches back, backing this, um, this up. So uh, yeah, don't stretching should not hurt. So if you're stretching, definitely keep stretching, but it should not hurt. So stop if you're doing the whole thing where you stretch until it hurts and you hold it there, stop it. Um, num the, and I already see you disagreeing there. So <laughs> pain. <laughs> you need a pulley um, system. Okay, so you get a bamboo tree, you get one tree, you get a pulley yeah. system tied to one foot. All right. <laughs> and then the last time we talked about this, the science I read, the research I read was saying how Dynamic stretches before strenuous exercises like running, sprinting, judo, um, and then static stretching for cool downs afterwards. Uh, but then now they're saying how you might not even want to do that. You might want to just have a stretching session separate from the training session. So, um, yeah, that's that's uh, that's my opinion. On, I'm just following what I've read. Mm -hmm. So what's your next point? My next one. Uh, I th what do you think about um, I, I'm going to include it to both these because they're kind of similar because mm -hmm. in my mind, but uh, mukso and mm -hmm. breathing exercises. Mm -hmm. Some some dojos do that, which is I think I personally think it's underutilized. Um, breathing is such uh, it, it's a shame that a lot of specifically traditional non pressure tested martial arts, let's just call it like that are the ones that emphasize on breathing. Like think Tai mm. Chi, uh, any sort of Kung Fu. Um, tai Chi, you know Bolo. Bolo do Tai Chi. <laughs> tai Chi, any sort of traditional Kung Fu. Um, some schools of karate. Mm. Um, let's say a lot of schools of karate. Uh, they emphasize on, on breathing, but then you look at like Muay Thai, boxing. Boxing kind of talks about breathing, but not to, not to the same extent, right? Mm -hmm. Judo, they don't really do a lot of breathing exercise and how to breathe effectively, which I think is really important. Mm -hmm. um, and it affects, you, you can, you can kind of argue over time you learn yourself, but I think it also affects your quality of training if you don't learn it early on. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Mokso, which is like the, the silent meditation, mm -hmm. um, we do it at the end of class. Sometimes we have time, um, but we don't really give instructions on, on that and it's kind of too short and I totally instructions close your eyes in through your nose out through your mouth focus yeah. on your breathing bring your heart rate down focus on what you worked on yeah today. but not every not everyone does that is what i'm saying right ah. yeah <laughs> and I, I mean i don't even say that but um i should 
but some a lot of clubs in Japan do it before class. Mm-hmm. Like before bowing in, they do that before class as a, a breathing exercise. Um, and I know Jimmy Pedro, Trevor Stevens, and some uh, higher level, like even when we went to the Darcelianzi training camp, mm-hmm. at the end, we would have a session where we just had, we had like, it was literally felt like 10 minutes, but it's probably closer to five. Mm-hmm. Um, we just laid on our backs on the mat and closed our eyes and like re- have visualize, relax, breathe, um, using our, using a diaphragm and all that kind of stuff. So, um, I think breathing exercises are really uh, underutilized, and Mokso in particular, which is uh, kind of, people just had the stigma attached to it, where it's like, oh, that's spiritual bullshit, you know, like mm-hmm. the Bud- mm-hmm. Bushido meditation, uh, Jedi, traditional Chinese martial art. But I think that that it's sad that that stigma is like attached to it, and I think that's going to be one of the big things that's going to be. Um, th- uh, in the next decade or so, I I believe it's going to become more popular. So mm, interesting. As more no, research I, comes out, yeah, I agree with Mokso, especially if you have a hard training session. I think Mokso is very important and stuff. Um, not very important, but I I absolutely see it being a help when you have a very hard training session. Where if it's not a hard training session, I can understand what they're not needing to be a Mokso. Mm-hmm. When I was younger, I had one of my Tonkso instructors. I was very not big, but he would always do like a little meditation section afterwards. And we sit in the lotus position, mm-hmm. hand inside to each other, uh, t- uh, um, thumbs touching and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he would just like breathe in and out, focus on your breathing. And one of my other instructor, my main instructor, we would never meditate. Like maybe we would talk about like once <laughs> every so often, mm-hmm. talk about it, but we never really did it. But I knew, I knew what the good things about it was because I'm a martial art nerd. So I, I read these things and I see other things like, things about it and you see it, uh, all the cool movies all the cool movies always have them meditating stuff blood sport you're doing your kata you're breathing and stuff while the sensei's getting your bamboo sticks now that's the mok so i like doing but i totally get it and that's why in my class i always do mok so to try to help people meditate breathe calm down i always tell them about focus on your techniques you did today and think about it so it's not just in one ear out the other that's one thing i feel mok so kind of helps that you visualize and think about what you did that day. Yep. But that's me. I, I like Mokso. I don't see nothing wrong with it. But I do get when it's an easy class, not a hard class. There's no need for Mokso. A hard class, definitely Mokso. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's really helpful to take some, like I, I learned some traditional Kung Fu, like Wing Chun is, is I spent the most time on, but I did a little bit of Tai Chi before. And they kind of like have it right in a sense, but in the, explained in the wrong way. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? It's kind of like how Galileo knew the earth was not in the center of the universe, but he didn't know exactly how like everything mm-hmm. was laid out. You know, like it's kind of like that because a lot of traditional Chinese martial arts says like the Dantian, like the Dantian, the, mm-hmm. the power is like right below your navel. Mm-hmm. Um, and they think that's the power source, but in reality, that's just where your center of gravity is. Like for <laughs> like in, in sports science, that's where your center of gravity is. Mm-hmm. And that's also where you can, your hips, all you always hear about how your hips generate power. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, they think it's some mystical chi thing, but in sports science, that's like the hip rotation center of gravity is where the power, the power sources. So it's mm-hmm. just very different, um, less scientific interpretations of it. And they think about how energy circulates around your body through breathing. And you can easily explain that through like, why, why do you have to breathe a th- certain way when you do powerlifting, like lifting mm-hmm. weights? This is, it's similar. It's just very different. Um, I'm not too, I was doing a little bit of reading on that, the science behind it. I'm not too familiar with it yet because I don't remember off the top of my head, but it has to do with like getting the oxygen through your, your muscles and all that stuff. And when you like, exhale your body does certain things like your pupils dilate or something and your um your uh awareness increases and all that kind of stuff which is why um certain people like hold their breath for certain things and exhale for punches and strikes and stuff so there there's all this um stuff behind it we still don't know too much about it but there is something there so there's value in doing it just don't I, i think the danger is when people add too much mysticism into it thinking like the chi energy 
key blast, <laughs> like touch of death kind of thing. That's what that's where the it goes too far. You're using my energy behind me and a dragon appears and stuff. And then the yin yang symbol comes and I'm like, yeah. ah, dragon ball. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's your next one? So my next one, it's kind of a two in one. This is again, this is going back to weightlifting for grappling mostly. Mm-hmm. And it's something that would, I was never a big weightlifter growing up. I've never been a big weightlifter. I barely lift weights. I'm more like doing stuff with weights. So there's one thing that I, a lot of guys that I used to work out with did a lot was okay so doing military presses behind your back okay when mm. you're sit, sitting down or standing up and stuff military press behind your back and lat pull downs behind your behind back as back. well I, now, I know where you're going with that yep. yeah now we know and again this goes back to being a wrestler and stuff strengthening your neck because you want to strengthen your back because a lot of power comes from your grappling comes from your back grabbing somebody and stuff controlling them when you don't have a gi on you grab their body so you need your body to be strong Back in the day, if you did military press behind your back, it was a great way to build up your back muscles. Same with lat pull downs. You're pulling down, it's the reverse. Okay. So I'm pulling, pushing one, I'm pushing up, doing one, I'm pulling down. Okay. Getting both, getting both angles of the muscle. Now, doing this, if you keep your neck straight, not moving, and trying not to clench your jaw and put too much pressure on your neck, it's okay. But no one does that. Everyone clenches their jaw hunches their neck forward and stuff, putting pressure in your neck. And a lot of people, for some reason, when they're doing this, they'll start moving their head back and forth. And if you do, and you move your head either left or right, looking in other directions, that's where you're going to put all that pressure on your nerves right here on your neck, and you're going to pop something. You can push a disc out. You can pop a nerve. You can, um, oh, what, what was the other thing it was going to be? That I was going to say, I can't remember, but that's how you can destroy your neck that way. You get those things, you just you get that lat pull down or the push up right there. You move your neck the wrong way. You pop, you're like, oh, 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 shoot. Oh, I just popped something right there. And that's a good way also to, um, God, I can't remember what the other one was, but just, it's not done as much as, you, I've looked it up also and a lot of people don't do it no more. Like mm-hmm. doing lat pull downs, like no one does anymore. And military press with, with the bar behind your neck also, a lot of people don't do it anymore so, because it's known now. Uh, I, I have to look up the next thing because I never read uh, about that, but maybe you're yeah. right. Um, what I read at the time when I was in college was um, it's bad for your rotator cuff mm-hmm. is what I heard. Oh yeah. I can actually yeah. see it too. I yeah. Can. That's what, that's why I heard was bad. And then mm-hmm. it wasn't until, uh, I don't know if you know who Mike Ezra Tale is. He's yeah. like uh, uh Pete, he has his YouTube channel pretty popular. Now he's a mm-hmm. uh, bodybuilder, powerlifting coach, all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. But he has a, he's a PhD like professor. He teaches this kind of stuff, uh, sports mm-hmm. science. And I watched one of his videos where he says that is a myth, the rotator cuff thing behind the neck. Mm -hmm. He basically said, if you can do it behind the neck comfortably, then Mm -hmm. it's fine. But if you feel any sort of pressure of any on the neck or the the rotator cuff, um, uh, don't quote me on this. I I need to look it up. I'm pretty sure he said this, but Mm -hmm. if you can do it comfortably, do it, but otherwise don't do it. Cause again, back to the squat thing we talked about, everyone's Mm -hmm. different, right? So it's not one rule where your knees need to be in, your your toes need to point at this angle. Like everyone's mm. structure is slightly different. Yeah. And like I was saying, like if you keep your neck straight, don't put much pressure in your neck and stuff, do it nice and smooth. Don't clench your jaw too much. You'll be it, it's okay for you. Yeah. But no one does that. Everyone wants to put on more weight. Everyone wants to push as much as they can. And that's when you get people being sloppy. And that's when you hear that pop in your neck or your compression mm. in your spine again in your neck. So that's where that's where for me, like I don't do it no more. I don't do it anymore because I kind of noticed that as I was getting older and I would do this, I'd be like, man, my neck is sore. My neck is messed up. I'm having those pains again. And so I was like, and then I looked it up. I was like, oh, no one's, no one's really doing this anymore because of this. Mil- no one does military presses that much anymore now. It's kind of an old school thing, I think. And especially uh, lat pull downs, like that one's like even more not done anymore because people can't control the bar, you know, so... Yep. All right. So, what's All right, your next so my, one? my next one is, uh, you, you know, that exercise uh, where you have one person standing and the other guy just climbs around you like a, a monkey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that that's one. an exercise. That's a punishment. All right. That's an exercise. Yes. Honestly, <laughs> I, I think that's, that's if for kids that could be fun, but for me, that's mm-hmm. like an injury waiting to happen. It's to me, it's kind of similar to jumping guard, you know, like mm-hmm. if you land the wrong, it, like some people widen their stance cause they can't stand properly. Yeah. And, um, and then someone just like 
lets go and falls on the side of their knee. You know, <laughs> like mm-hmm. I think that's the injury going to happen. Doesn't really train much. I think there's other safer methods of training the same. So yeah. some people say it builds up your core stability, all that kind of stuff and your strength, but like just move people around. Like <laughs> it's more just like, it's a cool thing. If you can do it, it's just a cool thing. Look like, look what I can do. You know, it's just one of those things in my opinion, but even like, yeah, it, the only person I think that gets a workout during that is a person holding the other person up. The person yeah. standing there doing the kind of standing squat or just a wide stance because the person crawling around. Yeah. They're getting a little bit of workout with their legs and core, but I don't think it's as much as the person is standing yeah. there. Again, back to the risk versus reward thing. Right. So mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Since that one was short, I'll pair it up with another one. So right, um, shrimps, shrimping. Oh, your Evies. Yeah. I'll, I'll let, I'll let you uh, go first. <laughs> What? No, I like well, it. Yeah. Well, well, I think Ebby's again, one done properly, no can defend. Yeah. <laughs> so it's the one thing where, yeah, if you work on actual shrimps, getting your hips back, they're great. But what happens with a lot of lazy people is that when I, they start doing what I call the backstroke, where mm-hmm. you're just walking their legs back, crawling on the back lightly and just doing a backstroke and they're not doing a real Ebby. So, so to me, I, I think, think the, it's like, it's yeah, go ahead. Anybody. I did. Yeah. No, it's no, not hurting ahead. anybody. Yeah. I, th- I think, uh, yeah, so I think most people don't do it right. I think BJJ has this correct. Like more and more BJJ places are are basically saying we're not going to do shrimps up and down the mat um, mm-hmm. because most of the time they're not even uh, shrimping correctly. The first thing, right? Because mm-hmm. when you shrimp, you're trying to get your elbow connected to your your knee to form a frame to keep the maintain the distance uh, and also ha- not allow the guy to get back into the spot uh in between your your legs and your armpit basically that's mm-hmm. that's side control like right? yoko shiogatame or any sort like you shrimp you to close off that space and get a creative frame so they can't come back in um so most people aren't even doing that right mm-hmm. uh n- number two um when you shrimp with a person on top of you to escape you have something you're pushing against against as leverage to mm-hmm. to to move your hips out when you mm-hmm. do it on the floor by yourself, there's nothing, it, it's not representative. Like it's really hard for you, for people to do it. So you would have people that are able to do a shrimp with someone on top of them, but not able to do the actual shrimping up and down the mat. Mm-hmm. Um, so why not just do Nawaza escape drills? <laughs> like, I, I, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? That way, yeah. the, first of all, shrimp is something you can do at home, on the carpet, <laughs> on the floor. Not home. everybody has a big ass house like you do, Anthony. Okay, do it on the grass outside. You can do it. Shrimp through the hallway. I'm you can do it anywhere. My Hold point on. is, you can do it anywhere. All right. <laughs> there's no safety <laughs> concerns. In my car. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> there's there's no like you don't need a coach there to to stop you from doing anything dangerous uh, unless you're talking about like shrimping on uh, across the railroad or something. <laughs> <laughs> Let me shrimp across the street. Shrimp across the street. I'm going to reverse Evie across the street now. All right, pull it yeah, in, pull so it in, pull it in. First of all, that's, that's already something why I think you shouldn't do it in class. And second of all, like, um, like I said, it's not representative. So why not just have someone do Nawaza escapes while shrimping? That's already better, like infinite times better. Cause the other one person is practicing how to pin the other person is practicing how to escape with resistance and re- it's more realistic because you have something to push uh, against. Mm-hmm. Um, so for warmups, this is the funniest thing. Like, you know, the one where people would like straddle over someone and then you have the person push against your shin. Yeah. Yeah. So you're already doing that. Why don't you just do the Nawasa pin? <laughs> like, I, I, I just don't understand. Because you get it. Now this guy's picking on me now because this is what I do in my <laughs> class sometimes to get people visualization of what they're actually doing because some people can't comprehend the the transformation from doing ebbies by themselves to ebbies with someone on top of them to just going straight into doing ebbies with someone in their guard. Some people just can't connect it. So with me, that's why I do these like little steps sometimes to try to connect them together so it's not just a big jump from by yourself to someone on you. I, I've seen that I think with- having someone on you and they might not succeed at first, but I think uh, given enough time, they're going to get it. I don't think yeah. people are that uh, physically challenged in that sense. I you're just, you're just, you you're see just, some of our students. <laughs> you're, you're just basically trying to tell them, okay, you're trying to push your hip, get your hips away from them and then create a frame between you and the other person. Then that's yeah. That anyway, so that shrimping there, there we go. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> ha ha. 
All right. So, um, and I get it how you don't like that. I understand you and your scientific methods and stuff. So my next one, again, it's another old school thing. And it's just something that it's been weird because I saw it come back into popularity, even though mm-hmm. I got told, a lot of people are told that it's not good for you. You shouldn't do it. But I saw it on, um, I think I saw it on either on Instagram or a YouTube short. And I was like, this guy's crazy. This is some old school shit right here. <laughs> so this goes back to boxing. So old school boxing technique, you you get a sledgehammer, you go to the dump, you get a car t- you get a car uh, door, and you sledgehammer the door. You just beat the metal. Nowadays, what we do now is that we get a sledgehammer and we beat a sledge uh, tire usually. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's easier on your joints, it's easier on your hands, it's easier on your body. All right, and it looks and so cooler. You do a lot more. It, you think it looks cooler? <laughs> I don't. Know, I think a car it looks cooler know. on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's picking on me again. <laughs> <laughs> So I've been seeing this thing about people going back to going to junkyards and sledgehammering, getting a door and sledgehammering steel. Now, I don't know why this <laughs> is becoming cool again, because what's happening is that when you do a tire, it's easier. It bounces off. It's yeah. a softer surface. When you do it to a door, you pull a door off a car and you put it on the ground, and you sledgehammer yeah. that. All the vibration, all the impact yeah. is going into your hands, Joints. your elbows, yeah. your shoulders, your back, everything. Okay. It is all going into that. It is pointless to hurt yourself like that. I don't know why I'm seeing people do this again. But they got to do it for Instagram. That's They're doing it for the gram. I'm thinking that's, you want yeah. to make this, well, it got popular again a long time ago. Yeah. Is that it was in Rocky either two, I think he was doing that. And people mm-hmm. start doing it again. And it's like, no, 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 don't do this. It's not good for your arms. It's not good for the same thing with like the raw eggs. People are like, oh, I got to eat raw eggs because Rocky did God. it. <laughs> so that's something that people are bringing back. I think it's, it's just a little pet peeve of mine right here. Just don't do it. It's not good for you. Yes, it is a very similar workout to doing it with a tractor tire. But all you're doing is messing up your joints. And you're going to be, sh- your shoulders are going to hurt. Your elbows are going to hurt. Your hands are going to hurt. Because all that yeah. vibration of just going metal on metal on dirt or gravel or concrete whatever these people are doing it on it's just remember that's how judo works the impact of something going down if there's nothing that's going to absorb that impact it's coming right back at you okay so if you have your sledgehammer and you're just doing on gravel at least a little bit's going to be dissipated grass a little bit's going to be dissipated but if you're doing on concrete uh um cement or asphalt or something it's not being dissipated into the ground that much all that vibration is coming back into you you, have you seen people been doing this lately? No, I have not. Like, no? I've seen it. I've seen it before, but not lately. So, All right. Maybe it's yeah, I've been really surprised by that. I don't feel yeah. like I feel like that's not really judo specific, but yeah, I. I well, I'm saying it because yeah. like I like people see me do that in judo, and people ask me why do I do sledgehammer on a mm-hmm. on tractor tire, and I tell people it builds up my shoulder strength. It's a shoulder. It's um shoulder strength and squat at the same time. And it simulates throwing for Ippon Seonagi, Seotoshi, you know, those big overhand throws and stuff. That's what it's simulating. So that's what I, that's what I simulate when I do it, when I come straight down, doing the reverse squat down and throwing the hammer. So that's for me, that's like kind of a judo thing right there. And it's like, if you see it, it, it may look, you want to try it out. I suggest don't do it, <laughs> but if you're going to do it. Just be ready. All right. You're going to be sore the next day. Um, the second part to that is that this is another old school boxing thing. My boxing coach used to talk about it and I, heard, and I saw it on a video. And I'm not sure if people are actually doing this or this is just like one of those dumb things where people are eating. Um, what are those tablets people are they're eating for a while? Um, Caffeine tablets? No, like no, the, tabs? no, no. The Clorox or whatever things. Oh, so, Tide Pods. Tide Pods. You know, people are saying yeah. they're eating them and then idiots actually do believe that they're actually yeah. are eating them. Do not soak your hands in brine. I'm sorry I have to say this in 2023. Do not soak your hand in brine. That's an old school boxing thing that they used to do in the 1920s and back then and stuff. Because they thought that if you soaked your hands in brine, your hands would get, would get harder and stiffer. So it would be a harder punch. It doesn't work out that way. You just make your hands brittler and softer. and then, Well, brittler, not softer. like that. They're going to be rough and stuff. But it would be easy to crack, create scratches and, and cuts on your hand yep. and stuff. And guess what you can get from there? Staph infections, infantigo, yep. ringworm, just other, it's a regular infection when that happens. That doesn't help you out. If you want to cheat, okay, you get your wraps and you put some, <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. <laughs> but I don't know if it was someone like doing the joke. I've seen it a few times now, just putting it out there in case someone did see it. Do not soak your hands in brine. It does not make your hands stronger for punching, all right? Whether it's for Muay Thai, karate, um, 
uh, MMA, kickboxing, where it's going to be, okay? You want to swing your hands? You beat your hands on stone, all right? And you build that endurance. So I think we're gonna running out of, uh, like, safety stuff. Yeah. So maybe we well, can... that was my last one. My, those are my last two yeah. right there. Those are kind of little joke ones. But yeah, yeah for those are my, my big ones earlier were the ones earlier before. But those two are kind of joking yeah. ones. But I, there's stuff that I haven't seen a little bit more. It's like, I just want to tell people, don't do them. If you see it, try don't try it. <laughs> Yeah, so safety ones were kind of, and also I guess the shrimping wasn't really safety, but like warm up stuff we already kind of dealt with, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not going to talk about Uchikomi. I already said that, but I do want to talk about if you are going to do Uchikomi, um, do you think you sh should do the what the Japanese do? You know, the winding up to step and mm -hmm. the swinging, swinging their way in. That's not safety no more. Now you're just talking about style. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not safety. Do, do you want to keep talking about it? or? So those are all our ideas about safety things. Yeah. Anthony wanted to talk a little bit about traditional stuff now that he thinks that we should maybe cut out or cut. No, I'm not. I, stop, I did not say that. Yes, he did. Because oh, I, yes, I actually did. don't think you should cut it out. Uh, yeah. So if you are doing Chikomis, yeah. So there's the only Japanese culture and the Japanese style of judo and stuff where they'll do this big wind up with the leg and come back forward to build power and speed. Okay. For Ippon Seonagi, Haragoshi, all the throws and stuff, they'll do this big wind up with their leg. In Japan, it's it's done to build speed and power. In Western culture, we'd say don't do that because you're now selling what you're what we always call yeah. like selling or giving a tell to what you're gonna do. If I see you bring your leg back, I know you're gonna be coming in for something deep. So in Western, we tell people like throw from their stance. We're in Japanese are like during warm-ups, they'll bring their leg up and back, up and back. And we're just like, it's this whole thing of is it a bad, um, bad habit? Are you developing a bad habit or do you understand this is just for practice for Uchikomis? Yeah, I always wondered why we do it. Like, or yeah, I, I always heard why you shouldn't do it, right? Because like, mm -hmm. you said you're, you're uh, telegraphing, but I never understood why they did it. And then um, Judo Yokohama, the YouTube channel, had a video, a couple of videos actually explaining, I'm not going to explain it here, it's kind of complicated how like, he explained it. So like but but basically it's like explosive entry with your hips is basically what he's saying but he had a really good explanation of why you need to do it and basically the way i see most people do it they do it wrong so if you are doing it you're most likely doing it wrong in the first place <laughs> so that after i saw that video i was like oh i was doing it wrong too when i'm doing it so um so i think there's a lot of stuff back to what we said about oh the japanese do it but like do you know why they do it like you, mm -hmm. just, if you don't understand why someone's doing something, then you might be doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. So then you might as well just stick to the other method, which is don't telegraph in the first place. So yeah, yeah. To me, I don't think it's a big deal if long as you understand that this is mostly for um, practice. It's not for actually rondo. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be like doing rondo and like wind up with your leg and jump in. And I think it's something the Japanese know, and it's what looks weird to people. It's like, oh, but they do it during uchigomis, but they don't do it during their tournaments. When they it's just like the Hanegoshi Uchimata thing. Right? That's your yeah. problem. All right. I no, no, I'm saying really they, they do that, but they don't do it in tournaments. It's the yeah. same, same idea. Yeah. And if you do do this, if you do do again, <laughs> if you mm -hmm. do decide to do this kind of stuff, make sure you have a sensei that understands or be prepared to hear from your sensei every time he sees you do this. Yep. You're doing it wrong. Stop doing that. What do you do? And you look like a fool, you know? Yep. So yeah. All right. look I into it if you're interested in it. Look into yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, sadly, Judo Yokohama, like for whatever reason, deleted most of their videos. So it's mm -hmm. no longer there. So um, yeah. The, I, I archived some of the videos that I liked, but um, don't have uh, all of them. But well, who knows what happened? Not sure. <sighs> okay. Yeah. Anything else? I think. No, I, that was my yeah. list. My list is mostly all that about real stuff. I know you want to go over some etiquette. No, stuff I think I like. think the safety stuff was the the majority of it. Um, yeah. There's a lot of. I, it's just sports science is has gone so far yet, and it changes so fast you know mm -hmm. like for example creatine i remember when i was in college taking creatine they told me you had to load creatine like a loading phase um mm -hmm. there's there's still a loading phase now but the difference was back then the loading phase is like oh you need to take like 20 30 grams of creatine for like a week and then mm -hmm. you have to cycle the creatine so your body doesn't get used to it but now like almost 10 years later we know that's not true there's still a loading phase but you just need to continue taking it the same amount like five grams every every day so um, oh, it's funny you bring up creatine because when i was in high school man 
people are swearing up and down by creatine. Guys are drinking, or I think with Arizona, it's the most like study supplement that's safe. Well, it's like yeah. everybody there. Arizona had like a creatine drink that a lot all of my friends are like drinking for practice mm-hmm. or after practice stuff before tournaments. Uh, guys are drinking, we're chewing creatine gum before tournaments or before practice. Guys are doing these uh, chewables mm-hmm. that you'd like take to before or after practice and stuff. Like it was so popular when I was a kid. When I was a kid, when I was in high school. So that's like twenty, a little over twenty years ago now. Back when I was in high school, but it was like everywhere. My uh, sophomore, junior, senior, like it was just everyone's taking it all day. I, I never took it because I couldn't afford it. My parents weren't giving me money to go take. Well, now it's like creatine. Now creatine's like dirt cheap. So yeah, yeah. So I never Which did. It, but I knew guys who just swore up and down by that stuff back in the day. Yeah, I started seeing some studies, only a couple, where it says um, creatine. You should scale creatine to your body weight, and so I'm like, man, this no, it doesn't hurt. I mean, I I've read studies saying like high dosages of creatine are safe for long term mm-hmm. consume. Uh, to consume and also um create like i said creatine monohydrate is so cheap like i ate i, I got this like a uh, huge bottle for like eight dollars mm-hmm. la- that's lasting me for like a year so i'm like it doesn't matter for me to try I, i'm gonna try it out and see if it helps and it helps so i increase my dosage mm-hmm. so yeah uh, why, why were we talking about creatine but you brought it up yeah. fool <laughs> yeah but my only thing with creatine is that you just gotta remember that the muscle that you build during that is going to be very hydrated muscle so when you're gonna be super hydrated as yeah. soon as you take off as soon as you stop taking creatine it's some of my friends weight. had to figure out you're gonna lose all that water weight okay yeah that's and one thing that they say like some people super, they take yeah it's not super like ripped like you're not looking like a damn mr olympia kind of guy you're gonna look yeah. big you know you're gonna look like a uh, loaded Hulk. You know, yeah. bloated, <laughs> bloated. He's a blotto. <laughs> well, when I was in college, people were taking, um, taking it, and then they're gaining like muscle weight. Well, they mm-hmm. think they're gaining muscle weight. They're like, oh, I gained like ten pounds. I'm like, you know, it's mostly water from the creatine. Yeah. It's not, it's not muscle. Yeah. So, yeah, just just be wary of that. But yeah, I I remember now we were talking about how sports science has changed so much. So there's a, we should really reexamine a lot of stuff that we we do for. Um, warm-ups and conditioning and ensure at the very least ensure it's safe you know like mm-hmm. we can argue about how effective certain things are but like shrimping but at the very minimum we should ensure that all the stuff we're doing is safe and exactly um yeah and as you like to say it was the dogma of like i grew up as wrestlers there's like certain wrestling things that like i still want to do properly like i I just have this hatred when I see people say, okay, let's do bridges and do like little shoulder roll things. I'm like, yeah. that's not a bridge. That's <laughs> not it. That's not it. I don't call that a bridge in my life. What the hell is that? It's ugly little, uh, a bridge is this. And I'd roll on my <laughs> neck. The next time I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have rolled on my neck. Oh, that hurts me. I'm too old for this. <laughs> but yeah, just do stuff that is safe and is not going to cause trouble later and do the research, you know, look up certain things. Cause you just want to do like, well, my sensei did this or my coach did it like this. And we did this way. Well, look at how your teammates are now, or look at how your coach is now. What, how's their body doing? You yeah. know? Yeah. So just be safe out there. You know, if you feel a lot of snap crackle pop when you're doing things, me, you might be doing it wrong. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen to your body is a good, is a good, um, thing like that's one thing i learned from my uh physical therapist who like i i honestly think everyone needs to see a physical therapist if, if you're seeing a chiropractor go see a physical therapist in america specifically because of how um uh certifications and licensing for chiropractors are but um yeah they, they basically told me listen to your body if it if it hurts it's probably not a good thing to do you know so all right <laughs> So is that it, Anthony? That's all you want to talk yeah. about today? All right. So with that, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow us on Instagram at the Tommy Talk. You can follow us on YouTube at the Tommy Talk. You can follow us on most streaming sites now. Not streaming. Oh, yeah. Streaming uh, sites. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're on a, we're on a, what is one of those, one of those fast sites that we can get on for free on. We're on two weeks. Only fans? Oh, no. Which is <laughs> funny because one of our students got it promoted wearing his only fan shirt. So I was going to say something, but then but I'm, I'm like, getting, uh, I'm huh? getting a bunch of messages now about does he have one? What's his handle? I'm like, I, he doesn't. I hope. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> and if, I, if he did, I don't know. All right. I don't know his handle, <laughs> which is uh, off topic. <laughs> so, 
I'm an actor. I've been on the writers. I've been on the strike lines with the so writers. So you're not starting OnlyFans, so you're saying? No, I'm not starting <laughs> only. We should start. I, I've been trying to start a Patreon with you for like three years now. I was like, do it. You don't no, pay do enough. It. I just, I just don't, don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to manage it. If you want to start a Patreon, you do it. I, <laughs> but there'll be these ladies that are actresses as well. Mm-hmm. But they'll be out there wearing their OnlyFans shirt with their hashtags all over it, and I'm just like, ah, I should look you up sometime. No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't got that. I don't got that extra money. All right. Your wife's not <laughs> home, right? When you're recording this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there'll be some actors out there with their OnlyFans yeah. shirt on, with their hashtags and their ads and all that. I'm just like, that's advertisement. Yeah. Do it. Why not, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> <laughs> all right. But <laughs> if you want to follow me, you follow me on Instagram at the Jerry underscore one. You'll follow Anthony on Instagram at Anthony Throws, right? You have any questions you want know, to talk about? Hey, we did a whole episode on a guest question earlier this week. Oh, last time it was uh, earlier this week. Um, you can hit us up at the Tommy talk at gmail.com. Anthony, is there anything else I'm forgetting right there? Uh, nope. I did get a couple of messages about my Okemi video. Um, uh-huh. So I, I sent the preliminary videos we had. I don't have time. To, I need to re-record. I, this is me telling why I need help re-recording <laughs> certain parts of the Okemi video. But um, right. yeah, the feedback's been good. Uh, just not happy with how certain parts turned out. So I want to re-edit and re-record it and probably add some like slow motion stuff so we can see it better. But yeah. No, 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 no. And as I always forget, we're on Threads. But mm-hmm. no one's on threads I hear anymore. And we're not on X, all right? <laughs> That's what they call it now, I forgot. Yeah, we're not on the X. All right. So right. with that, Anthony, don't forget to subscribe to our OnlyFans. And slap them at. Yeah, that too. <laughs>